Hey, you guys. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Your girl is back, y'all. I already know what is about to go on. If you haven't been here already, welcome to Dream Views. I love, I am doing musical interviews on my channel. I love meeting new people and I have met some amazing people along the way on this journey. I appreciate all of the support that I have gotten from those who have been checking out the previous dream views. If you haven't paused right here, go back to the previous ones and then come back to this one. But welcome in, welcome in. I'm gonna be reviewing artists all across the United States and who knows, maybe one day, Maybe even the world, the world, Craig, the world, okay? But you guys, make sure you put hashtag music is life in the chat. I want to see hashtag music is life in the chat. I want it lit up like y'all have never lit it up before, okay? And without further ado, today's topic is Davis Chris. You guys, this artist that I saw on Instagram, he's all over, but I first saw him on Instagram. He has some fire for days, okay? He is like a, a Casanova, okay? Like he literally, he, he I don't want to get into too much detail. I'm so excited about this artist that I have backstage. But he has his hands in music and he has talent, talent like none other. And I cannot wait for you guys to get to see who this is behind my, but on my backstage, you guys, I am going to play some music. You guys already know what to do. If you like what you hear, drop the fire emoji as well in the chat and let's get this thing popping. The fourth, this is the fourth installment of dream views you guys let's go <laughs> It's another man's treasure Well, I'm back off of the dark skin Nigga, when I apply that pressure Yo, ex nigga, don't forget about him Body look like you need a pound It's on the G-spot when I was pounding Now he's found like a pleasure I got different perspectives yeah. I hope you get the message Because I'm straightforward and I'm pretty blind I know what you really want Someone you can love or care Naturally, I'm just that guy Naturally, I'm on a high Naturally, I don't know why Naturally, if I just jump off my roof You might say that I'm naturally fly I'm joking, but when I was down on my luck And I ain't give a fuck, I was suicidal My excuses were so useless But now I'm thugging on niggas like Michael Jordan I'm important, yo chick call me when she wanted Cause you boring, like her last What's up? What's up? What's up? How are you? Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> I'm in character today, y'all. Don't judge me. I'm in character. Got a record coming out. Country, cowboy, blues, rock and roll. I'm in character right now. Let's get it. Let's go. Yes. Yes. I love it. And I will tell you that I have a lot of people in my chat that love country music as well. So you're going to fit right. They're going to love it. They're going to love it. Okay. And Amen. without further ado, the first thing I want to ask you is for those who do not do not know who you are, outside of what I just gave them, the little snippet of talent that I just showed for them, 
can you give your signature introduction and then tell us where your name originated from? Man, what's going on, man? It's your boy Davis Chris, recording artist, producer, songwriter, engineer. Um, I'm originally from Houston, Texas, you know what I'm saying? Shout out H-Town, you feel me? But uh, yeah, man, I've just been blessed and fortunate to, you know, have made a lot of music, you know, worked with a lot of people, um, you know, and had a lot of fun and been able to just, you know, create captivating, dope, interesting, creative, different, you know, kind of art. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful for that. So I appreciate everybody taking the time to, you know, listen to me uh, tell my story and, you know, chop it up with you. So I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for that. So can you tell us where your name originated from? Oh, so I was in the United States uh, Navy, who y'all Navy? For four years and on your badge it says davis it says your last name on it and then on the deeper meaning i just kind of uh i kind of ended up saying to myself i'll represent my last name being my family you know i represent my mom my dad and my sister um you know before myself you know just selflessness you know what i mean so that's how I, that's why i go by davis chris that makes sense your name is definitely your legacy so that makes so much sense and you said you originally came from houston texas did you relocate for music? So I had this crazy dream and I actually posted on my Facebook back in 2010. I think I said, I'm going to get to Hollywood. That's all I said. I'm going to get to Hollywood. And then I I figured if I do four years in the Navy, I could uh, get transferred to San Diego. And then from there, I'd move up to uh, Hollywood. And that's exactly what I did. I live in Atlanta now, but before here, I lived in uh the greater Los Angeles, you know, Long Beach, Whittier, and I lived in North Hollywood for six years. So, um, you know, I joined the Navy, did my four years, and I went to school in Hollywood as well. Shout out L.A. Film School. Um, and then, you know, I uh, was in uh, L.A. for about six years, and then I moved to Atlanta two years ago. That is powerful. You know what? I always, I'm an advocate for writing your dreams down, especially when they're super clear. So I definitely get that. I write down all of my clear dreams because it always is some manifestation of where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be doing. So I'm so glad that you said that. Amen. <laughs> definitely you moved amen. on it. Hmm? No, I just, uh, I was saying, amen. I'm just thankful that, uh, you know, I had a vision and I was able to, you know, do this and do that and execute my, my dream and make it, you know, make it come true. That's amazing. Okay. So my next question is, where do you fall in the music industry? And what I mean by that is, would you say that you are, would you categorize yourself as strictly a beat maker, a songwriter, a singer, a producer? Where do you fall in the music? I would say, because I get people like to, you know, they got to have some point of reference. I get that. Um, but like Pharrell, you know, Pharrell got songs as an artist mm -hmm. that he's done well on. You know, but we know him as a producer, writer, all around creative. But, you know, he has stuff as an artist as well. And that's, you know, humbly what I am, because I think being an artist is a privilege. You know, being getting music out there that people, you know, stop and take their time to listen to absorb your creative content. I think that's a blessing. That's not something that should be taken lightly. And I'm thankful. And I'm appreciative of any and everybody who, you know, takes the time to listen to my music as an artist. You know, so, yeah, I would say Pharrell, like Timberland, for sure. Yeah. But an artist first. An artist first. If I couldn't do anything, I was going to be an artist. And ironically, I think I've had the most success as an artist. I've made the most money as an artist, actually. So I'm thankful that's for that. That's amazing. And you nice some heavy hitters. You said Timberland and a Pharrell. That, okay. Yeah, and, Qu and Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson. Those are like my idols. You feel me? The big dogs. And then I got one from Houston. I have a, one obscure pick, uh, Paul Wall from Houston, Texas. Y'all know okay. Paul Wall. You yes. know what I'm saying? Back in the day, you feel me? But uh, yeah, Paul Wall. In a dream, I like the dream too. Yeah. <laughs> I love the dream. <laughs> yeah, dream is dope because he's very unapologetic. He like very much himself. He gonna tell it like it is. You can tell in the lyrics and the songs and just you know his personality. Dream is who he is. Terry, uh, I think Terry is Nash is his real name, but yeah, he he's himself for sure. Yeah, you name some people. You you gave throwbacks and some heavy hitters. Literally, they have been in the game for a long time. That's why I'm teasing. I'm like, oh wow, I'm impressed. Right, right, right. <laughs> so. How long have you been composing music? How long have you been? So I'm celebrating 10, I'm celebrating 10 years. This past January, I've been doing music for 10 years. My very first single I dropped back in 2013, it was called Face Only. Um, that was my very first introduction. And I have a kind of weird, ironic story. Um, you know, you hear like the struggle story of, yeah, back at first, when I first started, you know, my beats were da-da-da. Oh, then I say this humbly with gratitude and thankfulness to God, but my very first song was a hit. Got on the radio. In Houston, and uh, uh, a station called 99.9 The Beat in Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
and I had the music video on MTV. Somebody called me. I was in the Navy too. Somebody called me. I was like, hey, bro, you got a music video that's on MTV? And they called me. And they told me I felt like I was just the man. <laughs> I was like, I was the man. I was like, I got a reason to be on this video. I can't tell me nothing. I'm the man. I thought I, thought I was just on, but I realized <laughs> there's a lot more that goes into making it or, you know, elevation in your career than just one song, you know? And that's one thing I kind of, you know, I kind of pride myself on being uh, prolific and pro productive in that way. Y'all y'all know the artist Russ, the rapper Russ? Yeah, I think he dropped a song every week for a year and a half. And his catalog got hundreds of records and so does mine. So I believe in, uh, you know, the more the merrier kind of thing you know yeah you hit the yeah. ground running that's a that's a good humble brag but that's a brag to say the least like what <laughs> no, man. but but really but aside the flex aside from that i think i'm fortunate and thankful and blessed that god kind of tapped me on my shoulder and said yes mm -hmm. like i kind of mm -hmm. knew exactly what i was supposed to be doing from jump i didn't have to find it didn't have to search like yeah. he was like yeah like this is what you're supposed to be doing you know i'm thankful for that confirmation early yeah. on i think that's the big that's the bigger part than you know the, the stuff that happened because that's neither here nor there really you know it ain't you know it's cool but i think the affirmation you know just the confirmation of what i want to do is more important to me that's a breath of fresh air that's always good it's always uh it's always good that you keep yourself open to hear him and you know when you hear his voice and you just move on because some people struggle with moving on i struggled in my 20s but now that i'm in my 30s i'm like oh no i just <laughs> I want no yeah. God. Please tell me, let me go. And so, you know, and then working through the nerves. Do you get nerves? Did you get nerves to begin with? With that part? Uh, no. I, I kind of always been like out of my mind. I kind of been a, a nutcase <laughs> from jump. And I don't know. I think uh, just you know, I think too, because I've hit rock bottom a few times. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. struggle. You know, I've had some. I didn't take taking my fair share of L's. You feel me? So. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of just like, man, whatever, you know, especially now I'm thankful that, you know, my place in the life now, my life is in a place now where it's like, man, whatever, bro, just be yourself. People will like it. Some won't, you know, just keep rocking. So I ain't really tripping, really. And I'm thankful for that. Say that. I'm sorry. Y'all drop the fire emojis. Cause look, listen, let me tell you something. If I know my chat the way I know my chat, people going to be like, say that, say that, dropping fire emojis. Come on with it. I'm loving everything that you're saying right now. I'm just, trying to keep myself focused because this is amazing yeah, so, I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. no i'm saying i'm thankful i've been humble yes. i've been sat down a few times you feel me yes look that sit down is real okay the, <laughs> so this is needless to say but i definitely want to ask do you write and produce your own music or do you have a team well do you have a team man i i write and produce all my own music i write and produce for other artists as well I have a production company called DFD that I run with my business partner, Shane Foster, my bro, Shane Foster. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few artists signed to us. Shout out Chevy. Shout out Lexus Brand. Shout out King Pablo. Shout out Natalie. Shout out Jason. And shout out Ayana. These are my artists that uh, you know I work with and I produce and write their albums and engineer their music as well. I'm so amazed. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm amazed. Okay. So... I know you identify with R&B, blues, and gospel. Um, is this, and I think you probably already answered this, but is this your target audience, people who listen to these genres? Uh, yeah, I would say my target audience is probably in the urban space for sure. Urban, you know, a little country, a little blues. I'm kind of expanding the brand, you know, this stage of my career. Because, I don't know, I just got... I just got a little bored with just a typical, just like R and B. I got like a little bored, you know. It's like once you, because I do covers. Like once you done covered every artist and done, done, you know, all the R and B hits. It's kind of like, man, what else is out there, you know? And I'm the type of person who I find comfort in being a novice and sucking at something, being a beginner at something, and then the journey for me to get better. I enjoy it. I feel like that puts, you know. I feel like that helps make me a better man, a better person. And I think overcoming adversity really is just the name of the game and anything and everybody who's ever been great. You know, how much will you endure? How much will you sacrifice? And will you, you know, keep punching the bag, keep fighting to get better? So I'm, you know, I don't have no, I ain't tripping because I know I'll figure it out eventually. I ain't tripping. It'll suck right now, but 
I'll be yes. back tomorrow. You feel me? I'm gonna come back tomorrow. You feel yes, me? it's always I'm tomorrow. Cool. Y'all look, hold on, pause. We're gonna do something new. Can we do hashtag I ain't tripping? Hashtag I ain't tripping because that's how we need to live life, literally pushing past that comfort zone. Because if you stay in that box, you're gonna always be there. You literally have to take that first step. And when I tell you I love that, hashtag I ain't tripping. Never done that before, but put that in the chat, please. Yeah, <laughs> that I'm was tripping. something. You said something there. Okay. So, who are your influences to do what you do? Do you have uh, an artist that influences you, musician, family, or a life experience that has influenced you to go in the direction Man. that you have? So, I'll take it something different than music, right? Uh -huh. When I was four years old, I saw the movie Aladdin. Right, Aladdin with Robin Williams, the Aladdin, Prince Ali, fabulous, he, Ali, Ababwa, back in the day, right? And I was so just mesmerized, my hat keep tripping, my hat falling apart. I was so mesmerized by it, I went home and I set up blankets and pillows on the couch, set up my mom and dad's camera, and I reenacted the whole thing, the entire movie as a four-year-old. That's how they knew, and I knew, and God knew. This little motherfucker crazy. Like he gonna do. You know, I'm sorry. Can I cuss on here? Can I cuss on here? You can. I cuss can. on here? I let yeah, people see who they are. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, I know I was born for this. Like, I'm really an actor. Really, I just happen to do music. I'm really an actor. But um, yeah. So that that's my biggest influence. The movie Aladdin was my biggest influence. And actually, before I did music, I used to dance and step, like stomp the yard, clickety clack clack, the whole thing. And then I uh, I danced. And then, and then in college, I did a stage play with my bro, Will, and Onam. I did a stage play in college called Undergrad the Musical. So my other influence is a guy named uh, uh, Lynn, uh, Lynn, Lynn uh, I think it's uh, Lynn Miranda, Linwell Miranda. He did uh, In the Heights, and he did Hamilton. I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm butchering his name, but he was my, that was another influence. And then there's a battle rapper named Charlie Clips from okay. New York. He used to do like the freestyle battles and murder mook and serious jones and the thing i liked about that i learned what mc stands for that's okay. master of ceremony right basically in a room of 50 are you that guy or not you feel me when you speak and you do your thing is everybody gonna stop looking watch and you know absorb what you talking about what you're doing that's what a master of ceremony is jay-z is an mc Nas is an mc lil wayne is an mc chris brown is an mc usher is an mc MJ, Beyonce, shout out my beautiful black queens. Beyonce is a M, uh, MQ. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, MC, a master of <laughs> ceremony. Yeah. I was, thinking, I was thinking King, but yeah. But um, so, yeah, Charlie Clips. And then musically, I would say Timberland for sure, Pharrell, uh, Quincy Jones, Paul Wall from Houston, Texas, like I said, represent. And then I would say Michael Jackson from an artist standpoint, easily Michael Jackson. It's not even close because mm -hmm. I think – him being so expressive and so emotional and so just electric is just it's just insane you know it's just insane to me it's just like something out of, uh, out of this world like i've never seen anybody like that ever so yeah i would say mj yeah yes. again you you can tell you can feel i can feel the passion i can feel the passion through the screen i can feel just all of it. everything that you're saying and definitely an mc commanding the room okay you guys if y'all yeah. feel it like I said, keep dropping music is life because music is definitely life for you. I can I feel it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yes. With that, wait, do you have any siblings? Did they used to did you have siblings that watched this show that you put yeah, on? I have a I have an older sister, Crystal, aka uh Mubby, my sister Crystal. Yeah, she was very influential in my upbringing. She was a uh, very uh I wouldn't say strict, but just, you know, really cared about her baby, bro, and was really trying to make sure I was on the right path. You know, she didn't have a problem checking me or getting me in line or, you know, I'm going to tell mom. She had no problem doing anything. But, uh, yeah, I love my sister to death. Uh, she's a Spanish teacher in uh, Houston, Texas. Um, but, yeah, I'm very proud of my sister. I love my sister to death. And, um, yeah, she's been instrumental. Just my upbringing as a man, as a human, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, so I got to prepare you. I don't think I warned you beforehand i got I'm, I'm very corny sometimes no, and i got some corny game show music because we are working our way into our first game time ready no it's all good let's go okay oh, there you go <laughs> okay 
Okay. <laughs> I like the way you're dancing with me. Okay. You didn't leave me hanging. Definitely right pass the vibe check. Put the green checks in the chat, you guys. <laughs> okay. So the first game is this or that. You get to choose this or that and tell us why i'm going to give you two options of things and just tell us what you choose and why and then i'll answer after you okay so the first question i'm going to give you a few music questions and a few random questions okay and they're going to be mixed up okay the first one is would you rather dine in or do takeout dine uh dine in okay why would you choose to dine in uh because i like to just sit there i don't like uh the distance from wherever you at to get home, the food might get cold, the consistency. Cause I'm kind of a chef myself mm -hmm. now. So I'm really big into textures and flavors and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like grits, they get, you know, a little harder after you, you know, if you travel for 20 minutes. So for me, <laughs> I, you know, I want to eat, eat it right there. And I like to absorb the ambiance of places and experience for sure. Yes. And I chose to do dining as well. The older I get, the younger, I, younger me, I'm like, Oh, let me get it and go. But the older I get, I'm like, let me sit in. I want to dress up. I want to look nice. I want to enjoy the moment, enjoy everything around me, in front of me, everything, and the food. So definitely sitting in, dining in. Amen. Mm-hmm. So this is a <laughs> – I know that you are very busy. I'm pretty sure you are very busy doing – working with different artists, doing your own thing with your music and everything. So – Put your mindset in the frame of getting business calls. Okay. Would you rather take all of your business calls in a small Superman phone booth? <laughs> or would you rather only be able to handle your business via text? Oh, text. Because you can text and I can multitask and do other things. When people hold me hostage and they're talking to me, I got to sit there and listen to them and I can't do anything else. Because think about it. The majority of the way I make money, live my life, what's fun for me, it requires me listening. I can text and still be recording a song. I can be mixing a song, making a beat, and still be texting somebody, you know? And what I've learned in business, it behooves us all to be as concise, direct, and to the point as possible. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't get that, and they will negative, blah, 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 on and on, like, get to the point, bro. What are you trying to say? Hurry up. I got stuff to do. I got a life to live. You know, so uh, definitely texting. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I still I still love people. I don't mean to be like, you know, standoffish or like I'm too good for people. It's just, I'm a busy motherfucker. I be doing shit. You feel me? I got a lot of shit to do. I ain't, I ain't got time to take time to take time. You feel me? Yep. But uh, yeah, that's my answer. Yep. So, <laughs> so I don't know. I couldn't. So I don't know. I'm old school in the way that I like to talk and I want to hear what you got to say. But then it's just like the texting is easier. And like you said, I can do multiple things at one time. And then sometimes I I will get the case of the nerves and I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to talk. Let's you just text me. Text right. me and we can get it on out. But the next question is, would you rather, so we know we, you sing. So would you rather sing the spelling of your name before every conversation, every conversation, or would you want to play a jingle before every conversation? So you got to break out and play in a jingle before every conversation. <laughs> uh, probably, <laughs> probably play the piano because I play, I play the piano as well. Probably play the piano. I think that would be kind of fun. I probably would sing while I play the piano. <laughs> D-A-V-I-S-C-H-R-I-S. David, <laughs> it's a combination. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a combination. I'm not uh -huh. like a. I try to sing. I try to sing on my channel. It is definitely not on your level at all. <laughs> um, oh, it's, all good. it's it's within all of us. It just has to be brought <laughs> out. I'm, I specialize in vocals. I specialize in vocals. Like when I record people. And do yeah. my music vocals are like, you know, I think that's kind of sort of we remember vocals. You don't remember drum patterns for songs. Do you know the drum pattern of thriller? Do you know what type of hi-hat was in thriller? Do you know the baseline melody? Of course you uh, probably not. A musician that is a nerd and studies the shit might, but the average person does not know really any of the elements of a song except maybe like the chords, maybe, but the top line melody for sure. Because if I go uh da 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 you know i'm singing billy jean billy jean is not my you know i'm singing that 
You don't know yeah. the bass line or the instruments or none of that. But yeah, that's my two cents. My bad. If y'all don't hear the passion in this man, if y'all do not hear the passion in it, put the put the music is life. Music is your life. I'm telling you, I can feel it. I hear it. You know that. Look, you know the 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 beats in the back. You, I know you know that. I wouldn't pay attention to that. That was totally that was good. I didn't even think about that. Um, I didn't want to torture nobody with singing my my name because sometimes it'll be a hit or a miss. It might sound good one day, <laughs> the next day it'll sound like doves crying. But <laughs> would you rather? The next question. Thank you so much for that too. Um, would you rather? be in a starring role so i saw you i saw that you said you choreographed choreographed a lot of the step shows in college so i, I grabbed this i studied i studied some step shows you did a post about a step show or something so you gotta add something no no, no. Go, go ahead go ahead I, okay so this question of this this or that is would you rather be in a starring role on stuff the yard like the shows that you have choreographed, or would you rather be on You Got Served? Think about the two different. The two oh, different stomp the yard for the show. I used to step first, stomp the yard for the show. <laughs> we about to do it like, nah. Stomp the yard for the show. That's why I used to get down. Look, look now. I used to get down. You hear me? Ask about me. They know me. They know Chris Davis. I used to go by Chris Davis back then. They know me. I'm a legend. They know me. I choreographed step show routines for. For um for alphas for AKs I did SG rows I done done uh who else I do I do deltas I done did um uh I think I did Q I did the Q I can't remember if I did the Q but yeah man I choreographed step shows for all the friends and sororities on campus man as a civilian because I would <laughs> like because I would like that because I would like that some people are like that I'm like that <laughs> it's a different <laughs> yeah. like, I'm that. like that okay. <laughs> come on man I'm like that <laughs> Okay, you got me cracking up. <laughs> See, okay, pause, y'all. Now listen, I act a fool on my channel. Listen, y'all. <laughs> this is like it makes me feel watered down, you guys. So listen, his energy is contagious. I'm like, look, I'm not the only one out here to be acting a fool. Okay. <laughs> I'm like that. <laughs> I'm really like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I'm like that. Stop laughing. Yeah. I'm not like that. Yeah, I'm like that. I'm like that. Don't stop. I'm I'm for real. I'm crazy, man. Come on. I'm crazy. I'm trying. Look, taste one to know one. Hey, man. I'm with it. The next one. Oh, God. Would you rather binge watch tv all day or watch movies binge watch movies all day do i like movies or tv better uh, i think tv because it's longer because there are more episodes you know eight episodes that hour long is eight hours versus versus two hour movie where things got to be condensed I think I might like TV better. And some of the TV shows I've really been into are Snowfall, shout out Franklin, uh, Franklin Saint, uh, Bam and Idris. Uh, what else? I really like the, um, uh, I like You with Joe Goldberg uh, that was on Netflix. And what else did I really love? Oh, there's a show called Terminal List with Chris Pratt. The dude that is in Garden, uh, Garden of the Galaxy It's called Terminal List. That's probably one of the top three series i've ever watched he's like a navy seal and he like getting revenge get him up like it's like my favorite he liked it but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> he really liked that <laughs> and so i couldn't choose because I, I i used to watch tv and then when i started working i'm just i'm a busybody. um i try my best to watch movies my mama I always be like check this on netflix I got a subscription I pay for my mama watch it. Okay. I right. can't watch it. And so I would choose to binge watch. I do got some movies on there that I do like. I mean, shows, shows. Um, if my attention is able to sustain that long, I will watch um, TV shows. And the one that I was watching recently, I saw you. I watched the first season of you, Unpopular Opinion. I, I haven't watched Snowfall yet. Um, <laughs> you crazy. Do not jump on me in the chat. Don't jump on me in the chat. I feel like everybody watches Snowfall. 
I watched what's the one um uh, Manifest. I I haven't even okay. gotten past season one of Manifest. I'm on like episode seven or eight. I'm that bad at watching shows, but I would choose watching shows. Okay, so again, did my research on you. I saw that you cook. I'm glad you mentioned that earlier. I saw you cook, and I didn't want to say nothing, but <laughs> this this <laughs> this this or that. I was look look. I I look. I be looking. I look search for everything. I dig in the crevices. Okay. I'm trying to tell you, all right then. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. So, the question is: Would you rather have shrimp with every meal, <laughs> or would you rather have scallops with every meal? Oh, shrimp! My favorite food. I eat shrimp all the time. Okay. I'm a pescatarian. I don't eat meat or chicken no more. Really? I'm pescatarian. Yeah. How long yeah, have I'm you been pescatarian? I've been pescatarian by. By about two, three years now. Yeah, I had That's to let it go. Time. I had to yeah. let it go. Yeah. So, shrimp, for sure. My chat about to jump on me. They gonna throw me under the bus with this unpopular opinion again. Look at you, your face. You ready for it? Unpopular opinion. I might be the only person in this world that don't eat shrimp. <laughs> oh, really? I don't eat shrimp. I don't eat shrimp. The thing, so my reasoning is. I don't like the way it looks. Okay. <laughs> it, it just don't look right to me. It, it looks. I don't like the way it looks, and it's a texture thing too. That's like calamari. I tried calamari one time. It, I don't like the texture. I, I don't like it. So <laughs> you sliding off the screen. Y'all don't jump on yeah. me in the chat. But calamari just, crazy. <laughs> you said what? Calamari crazy. <laughs> Have you had it before? Yeah, and I was like, Ugh. Ooh, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle it. It was nasty to me. Mm, mm, mm. I would choose scallops for sure. I, I can't okay, yeah, I like scallops too. Scallops are very nutritional, very healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so the next question. So I've been looking at you. I was looking. I've been digging. So this question is a random one. Kind of music meshed together. Um. Would you rather go on a red carpet barefoot or with the ugliest shoes ever? Oh, baby, I'm from Houston, Texas. I lived the first five years of my life barefoot. I won't go on a red carpet barefoot. But what barefoot, but what it really signifies to me as a man, it, it just says that I'm really in control of my life. I don't give a fuck anymore. I really don't care. I'm just doing me. You know what I mean? Some people do this and they do that. Bro, I do me. Okay? You can do you. I'm going to do me. <laughs> okay, dude? Like, I don't want to fucking do what they do. I just want to do me, bro. So, yeah, I will go barefoot. Easily. Yes. Easily. A and make a, but make a, but make a whole, make a, uh, a moment from the shit, though. But like, yeah, you saw that barefoot motherfucker on a red carpet? That motherfucker will fly like that. He like that. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely yeah. like that. He like that. He's not like that. He's not like that. He like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Barefoot. I, I, I chose. I can't do no ugly shoes. I ain't gonna lie. I might do barefoot too. I can't do no ugly. I, I got. I got a lot of shoes. Of course, every woman does. I, I yeah, can't barefoot. do no ugly shoes. <laughs> okay. What are you gonna do? It's okay. Hmm? I would definitely do barefoot, but I would be probably the shortest person out there without any shoes on. Like, but yeah. No, it's all good. You doing you? But yeah, staying in my lane, a professional stayer in my laner. Okay. Amen. The next one is: Would you rather wear overalls to the most overalls? You know, I know you know what overalls are to the most important business meeting of your life, or hoochie daddy shorts? He ain't nothing but a hoochie daddy, humpback, humpback, hoochie daddy. Uh, I like, I actually like overalls. It kind of sort of, it's like a kind of a relaxed kind of, you know, like I ain't tripping. Yeah. The business meeting probably for me anyway. <laughs> you heard? Yeah. The meeting for me. What we meeting for? Me probably. <laughs> well, I'll, wear, I'll wear what I want. <laughs> the meeting for me, I'm going to wear what I want. So yeah, I'll wear overalls. Overalls with the cowboy hat. 
Boom. And, see, my, and my thighs are real thick. I got like some real strong muscular. I used to play football and run track kind of thighs. So who's your daddy? So as they might not, nah, nah, that, 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 that's too much. That's too much. It's too much. All right. Hide your mama. Hide your auntie. Don't, don't let your auntie come around me. You understand? Because, you know, I, I got some thighs. They thick. Thunder thighs going to bring lightning. You understand? So let's, let's be overall. Let's just keep it safe. Keep it PG-13. Oh PG-13. 13. 13. 13 because I'm light, man. PG-13. Oh and just do the overall. God. Y'all hit a tag like that. I'm like that in the chat. You literally changing all the rules. Okay, Green <laughs> Center. Hashtag because I'm like that. <laughs> in the Come chat, on now. Light it up. Oh my God. I can see <laughs> you light a room up. Okay. Okay. The next question is you looking like I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. The next question is would you choose? I feel like this is a given, but I might not be wrong. Would you choose to go sightseeing? Would you rather do sightseeing or would you rather shop? Just shopping. Well, um, if I'm shopping, dude, what's the budget? Do I have a budget? Hmm. If you, well, no budget. Sightseeing, no budget shopping. I know. Of course. <laughs> of course I'm, well, you know what? Actually, <laughs> he said, of it, might be sight, it might be sightseeing because I found because being in the Navy, I've been to Dubai, I've been to Athens, Greece, mm -hmm. I've been to Italy, and ate pizza at the Leaning Tower of Pisa and paid with my visa. <laughs> you, you, okay? <laughs> okay? Oh, like, it's, a real, it's like a real thing, okay? And the girl I was sitting with, her name was Teresa, okay? And the lady that served us, her name was Lisa, <laughs> okay? So, this, you know, <laughs> let's just back it on up there. <laughs> but uh, I would think, I think the experiences are the more enriching, you know, enlightening part of our life and our journey on earth as humans. I think seeing all the beautiful architecture and the, you know, geographical places on earth are, are probably uh, more beautiful and going to mean more when you're a hundred years old versus some fucking clothes, you know, clothes are fucking here and there. So I want to go see shit. Yeah. I think yeah. go sightseeing, but overseas though, foreign shit, I didn't been damn near everywhere in the U S so yeah. overseas for sure. So I got some more unpopular opinion. These people go, y'all gonna jump on me in the chat. Oh, you might jump through the screen like, what is shake me? Look, shake me right, okay? Listen, <laughs> hear me out like that little boy. Listen, Linda, listen, Linda, honey, listen, you're not listening to me. Um, I've had my passport for five years and I have not one stamp in my passport. Um. <laughs> Like like my twenties, I lived in fear, so I didn't like going a lot of places. And as I moved towards in my thirties or whatever, and I'll be thirty two next month, um, I had been I've been traveling more. Um, I've been to a lot, of course, southern states, and of course, Texas, like all of the southern states I've been to. I just haven't been western states, northern states, and I have a best friend that has been everywhere, and she has invited me to every trip overseas. I just wouldn't go. But now I'm like, okay, I'm ready. So I would choose sightseeing for sure. Ask me what was wrong with me in my 20s. Fear was driving me. Moving out of the fear side, I am allowing myself to go ahead and take these opportunities because life is short. Um, so I will do sightseeing. And clothing, I have so much clothes that I don't even wear brand new stuff. And I also, I've, I've thought about downsizing. I think it's an art in downsizing. Like you don't need all this stuff sometimes. Like it doesn't you dictate who you are or what status you are, none of that. Growing up, I didn't have that much, so I collected it all. But now it's just like downsizing might be the thing for me. But the, to answer the question, I would choose sightseeing because now I have been branching out and you know moving around or whatever, doing what I wasn't doing in my 20s, so. But I like your answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so this is a music question. I don't know if you know who she is. I know you know who the other one is, but would you choose to listen to Yeba? She's a West Memphis, um, Ar West Memphis, Arkansas, um, artist. Have you heard of her? I know Yeba. I know Yeba. Come on now, Yeba oh, Green. Pass the check. Put the green checks in the chat. Pass the vibe check. Okay, Yeba or Adele. Would you rather do it? No, not listen to. It. Would you rather do a duet with Yeba or Adele? Them some heavy. I would like, rather. 
I mean, Adele's legendary. Shout out to Adele. She's great, but I would definitely work with Yeba because we yes. just, um, you know, her creativity and how dynamic her, her vocal is, is just insane. I think she is one of those people who you can really tell she's very passionate, been doing it for a long time, mm. and she doesn't take herself too seriously. You know, it's just like, hey, I'm just singing songs, just doing what I love. It's not a big deal. And I like people that are humble and kind of sort of, you know, can play it, can chill because the industry is full of people who, are proud and big ego and all that, but people who like, oh, I just like making music. Let's just do something cool. I like people like that because that's the type of attitude I've tried to maintain now. Let me just make music that I like. You know, it ain't got to be a, you know, a bragging contest. Let's speak that into existence for you. I think that would be great. Y'all, let's speak that into the touch and agree. Let's speak that into existence for him because definitely he, that'll be dope. That would be so dope. That would be so dope. I'll be looking out for that. Marky, Amen. you heard it here first. Marky. <laughs> so, Yeba and Davis Chris on a track, okay? <laughs> and with that, Show you. we are done with the first game <laughs> Okay. Now, how old were you? This is the biggest question. Everybody hashtag music is life in the chat. How old were you when you realized that music was life? Oh, four. When I when I watched Aladdin for the first time, because uh -huh. the music in it kind of inspired and influenced me too. I was four. I'm telling y'all, I watched the movie. I was just like the whole time. I was just mesmerized. I'd never seen anything that cool before. Mm -hmm. So for sure, I was four. For sure. For yeah, sure. For sure. Come on now. Okay. So what or who gives you motivation to keep pushing? If you ever find yourself in a down, like who or what pushes you to keep going? What's your I, think my, I think my family, my family acronym is MAC, M-A-C-K. That stands for Michael, my father, the great Michael Davis. Alexis mm -hmm. is my mama. I'm Chris, obviously, and Crystal with a K, mm -hmm. special K like the cereal, is my mm -hmm. sister. I think the three of them kind of motivate me because, you know, they've, uh, you know, they really helped shape and mold the man I am today. You know, I owe a lot to them. They've inspired me in various, you know, intricate, unique ways. Each of them have. And, uh, you know, I kind of sort of and I and I understand the lineage that I come from and the legacy that I hope to build is one that they have built for their lives. So I, I realize I got, you know, it's a little bit um, it's a little bit more riding on, on my life. I feel like I ain't just really out here just willy nilly. Like I got, you know, I got some things that I really care about deeply. Yeah, you blowing me away. Yeah, I'm living, I'm living, I'm living, I'm living, for, I'm living for something bigger than myself, you know, because my ultimate goal is immortality. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, people be confused. What do you mean immortal? You trying to be Benjamin Button? No, the immortality right. meaning um, I want something I do to last, you know, a thousand years after I'm gone. Think about MJ. He is immortal. Prince is immortal. You know what happened in uh, 1814? You know who wrote a very famous song in 1814? Do you know who it was? You know? Name somebody. Uh, I'll give you a hint. They sing it at every national or uh, every major sporting event. Oh, you're talking about the national anthem. And his okay. name was Francis Scott Key. He wrote the Star Spangled Banner in 1814. And think about it. We're singing that song Our almost, friends. you know, 200 plus years later. He's immortal. Happy Birthday was written by two females, I think, back in like 1910, 1920, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and yeah, we've been singing that song for 100 years. We're probably going to keep singing it. You know, you I want something. I want something I do to last that long. You know, God willing, you know. You're blowing me away. Listen, and you know what? Divine intervention, divine setting. I, I always can relate in some kind of way, and it just confirms and grounds me in my YouTube. Um, and what you said that resonated with me just now was you want something that is going to you want to be able to create something that is immortal. It's gonna it's gonna outstand you when you you got long gone. And I always tell people on my um channel, it's motivation to keep going. And to have resilience. And I said something that I said, even if it's small, like a mustard seed, something that I say is going to stick with somebody and help somebody because it was what I did not have. I'm giving out what I did not have and what helped me. And when I'm long guns gone, somebody might catch one of my videos and be like, hey, let me try this. It might work. Hey, it worked. Let me keep going. Let me keep Amen. going. So definitely get that. That's the whole point of my YouTube. You just you know, brought it back to center with your answer. It resonated with me a whole lot for sure. Um, you guys, hashtag music is life and hashtag like that <laughs> in the chat. Okay, with the face. Hashtag like that. 
<laughs> in the chat. I'm blown away. I it's, it's hard to ask the questions because all the answers are amazing. But the next thing is, I'm going to play a clip to the song that caught my ear. Okay. And I'm going to ask you, what were you thinking? What were you thinking when you created this? Because this is what blew me away. And you guys, I'm going to show y'all. And just let me know. What were you thinking? Let me show you. She works hard for the money. So hard for it, honey. Come on, man. Before you, I should look, before you answer this, let me tell you something. My people know that I like old songs, new songs. I mesh them together. That right there was literally a melted pop in my ears. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> Who is this? And then I went on your page and was blown even further away. I'm like, I'm surprised I got hair at this point because I was just blown back. The edge of snatch, everything. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? All right, I'm going to break it what? down. I'm being dead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down. So I learned like doing covers. There's a secret science with covers, right? What's yeah. the most iconic R&B song of all time? You know? Tell me. I'm looking at passing the vibe check. I Will Always Love You, Whitney Houston, yeah. right? Whose song yeah. is it originally? <laughs> Dolly yeah. Parton. Whose song okay. is it originally? It's Dolly Parton. I think Aretha Franklin is a cover, right? Um, what else? Um, uh, I think uh, not... Uh, Share, I think, what is it called? Share My World for Mary J. Blige, I think it's called. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Love like this. Love this that's, that's, that's someone else. That's not Mary J. Blige. That's but all. I think that's... Uh, Faith Evans. That's Faith Evans. Yeah. Yeah, I think the music in that is a sample. So sampling and like covers and things that are nostalgic is something I did a lot of research on. I realized there's... Uh, you know, there's a positive effect that happens with consumers and fans when they hear something that's familiar and you give it to them in a slightly different way. Right. And then I have a single coming out that's kind of rock, blues and country. So I figured to myself, I got to get in character because at this stage, making music, I didn't made, you know, thousands of songs. So for me, what's fun for me is like getting into character, you know, like that's why I got on a cowboy hat. I've done Afro beats. Uh, it's, oh, the one Afro number, it's the one that's number 18 right here. This song right here. Yeah. I wore a dashiki every time I worked on the song. You know, I did uh, Afro beat more sombrero. I mean, uh, a Latin song and did a sombrero. I co-wrote it with my sister, who's a Spanish teacher, right? Yeah. You yeah. feel me? But uh, I like to get into character, so I figured, let me do it in the style of somebody who, you know, like rock and roll, country, R&B, and combine it all. Let me do it like that on purpose. Let me make my voice sound like this on purpose. Let me do <laughs> it like that on purpose and get into character, you know? And, um, yeah, and I do the covers to provide incentive for people to, you know, want to consume my music. Because if I do something you like and I wow you two or three times, yeah, you're going to be more uh, open and receptive to, you know, whatever it is I got, as long as it's closely in that same style. If I did opera, you might be like, oh, I don't like that shit. But that's what I've learned doing covers and making beats. You have to give people a reason to want to, yeah. you know, digest your content. Because artists typically are entitled. They think, oh, I'm talented. I look good. You should listen yeah. because you put it out versus no. Nah. Let me earn your fandom. Let me earn your respect. Let me earn your time and attention because it's valuable. It's a million motherfuckers on earth that do music. Why me? I'm going to show you why. I'm going to keep giving you a reason why. I'm going to wow you a few times. And, you know, hopefully, you know, you'll be uh, receptive to, you know, my content and my music. I've learned. Okay. It's, like I say, there's 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 humility and there's humbleness to really, really, truly, you know, be uh, be understood in how to really elevate in life. You know, you have to be selfless and aware and absorbent and, you know, give before you can just walk around with your hand. Like, give me, give me, give me, give me. Take, 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 take. You have to give, you know, and I understand that. A man with a purpose, a plan. And when you show up, you show up. That's all I heard. With I heard what you were saying, but I heard man with a purpose, man with a plan. And when you show up, you show up for the occasion. You are all in. Like, even what you talk about, you dress with the dashiki. You do the, um, the hat. You get into character. 
Listen. And one more point, one more point. I'm, I'm, I, don't mean be long, I don't mean to be long winded. I think mm -hmm. these days the music is so oversaturated. I think being unique and being different can stand out more than something that's good. Listen, listen. And I always listen. think of Fetty Wap. Yeah, that little, yeah, baby. <laughs> it was so unique and so different. He had three songs in the top, uh, top 10 in the hot 100 in the same year. That's like incredible. Yeah. It's like he's doing like Michael Jackson numbers. And it's like, to be fair, with respect, he's a dope artist, but would he win a singing competition, you think? Maybe not, right? But his voice was definitely unique. We was all singing, baby, won't you come my way? My way. We come was all singing, right. Right. yeah, baby. We was all singing that. Come on. So I try to focus on, uh, you know, what's unique these days, you know? Yeah, you're doing a great job because I was like, whoa, hold on. Look, if I was driving, I would have been like, skirt, skirt. Okay, look, what is that? <laughs> thank you, thank okay. you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so my question, my next question for you is how do you know when a song, a beat, or a project is done? How do you know when you are done? What do you listen for when you're producing? So, so over time, I think, and this extends to all creative disciplines, there is a level of taste that you acquire. You know what I'm saying? I think my taste has just evolved because I listen to all genres of music. I've studied every iconic artist. I've listened to interviews. I've seen studied mannerisms, little idiosyncrasies they might have. I've watched them record, you know, and I interned twice. So I've seen Mariah Carey in session record a song because she did it in about an hour. And Mariah Carey is an instrument. She, <laughs> she could do and sing anything. She'd do it in one take. She might do another take just because, just to see if she can outdo the first one. But, you know, uh, I think taste is like the biggest thing in terms of knowing when something's done. It's kind of sort of, you know, I just kind of know, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I kind of just know. And I always aim for, I think of songs like movies. There's a mm -hmm. rising action, there's a climax, there's a falling action, resolution. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think furthermore, I've learned that as creatives, we can kind of dictate your response. Think about white chicks. When y'all saw, you know, what's his name? Uh, Terry Crews making my way downtown. Wow, we, <laughs> they knew we were going to laugh. Yeah, They knew we were going to laugh. When we saw white chicks in the scene where they went to the bathroom and they're in the toilet, we we knew that. We, yeah, they knew we were going to laugh. They knew that, bro. They knew that. They knew we were going to laugh. They so I think you develop, I think psychologically, you develop an awareness of what people are going to like, what people are going to kind of respond to, you know what I mean? And then music, I've been blessed and fortunate to kind of, you know, sort of pick up on some of those things, you know? Come on. You think you picked up on some. I think you picked up on everything. I'm sitting here like, no, nah, let's push Yeah, I got a very, I got a very analytical, objective approach to music. Yeah. Even though it's subjective, it's an art form, but I learned there are some things that are objective. There are some things that are finite, indisputable, you can't argue. Yeah. You know, I'll give you one, I'll give you one more gem. I learned something very simple in psychology called the mere exposure effect which simply states you will have a positive response to something that you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. It's like inevitable. Like you have a, or you'll be likely to have a positive response to something you're familiar with. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, like, you know, that's like smelling a smell. Like if I smell something that I smelled when I was a child, I'm immediately feeling at home. I'm like, okay, I know this smell. <laughs> that aligns with, that aligns with uh, nostalgia. You know what I'm saying? That's why mm -hmm. the sampling and covers is like a, Hey, as soon as it comes on, you probably, you know, if I do my job and deliver the art in a compelling way, you're probably going to like it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's right. That's right. And with okay. that, you guys, first of all, drop the fire emojis. Drop hashtag like that. Because if y'all ain't figured out by now, <laughs> he like that. <laughs> like, no, you said not like, like that. How do you say it? Like that. I'm not like that. I'm like that. <laughs> like, I got a I'm like that. Accent. I got a Memphis accent, so I gotta like that. <laughs> you, oh, you from Memphis? Okay, yeah. man, I heard your accent. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Memphis. I've been. I think. Yeah, I've been to Memphis before. I think yeah. I went to the double. No, I went to Nashville. I've been to Nashville before. I went to the yeah. Dove Awards in 2021. The Dove Awards. Yeah, yeah it was dope. So number. So with that, we're gonna move into a game time number two. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Okay, so the this this right here is I love this one. Bear with me with my struggle notes. This is finish the lyrics. I'm gonna sing one part of a song. When I stop, I'm gonna go like this, and you gotta finish. 
<laughs> All right, we'll see. Try. It's a lot of stuff in my head, but we'll see. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. So it's like new, old. Do you want me to give you a hint as to the artist or you want me just saying it? Uh, just sing it. If I can't, then give me a hint. Okay, I'm going to try to sing it. <laughs> Don't judge me. Don't judge. I'm not like that. <laughs> okay, yeah, here we go. Great. Thank you. Okay, green roll. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you, when you started, you like did a whole, what was that? Go again, go again. <laughs> go again, go again. Go again, go again. Go again. Wait. 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 Okay, okay. Let me say the song, okay. Here you go. Green. Green rolled up in leaves. Yellow moon ring, purple light. Da, 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 yeah, yeah. I don't know the song. Like the thing that's indigo, dreaming indigo by Chris Brown. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, shout out Chris Brown. Oh, that's a good my, one. my notes. I told you struggle notes. Wait, that's on the album. Got 50 songs on it. Baby, I ain't I ain't I ain't had no time listening to all 50 songs now. I love Chris Brown. He a dope artist, but I ain't got time listening to no 50 songs. That's too many songs for me, baby. I can't do it, baby. Okay, let's let's here go another one. Here go another one. Okay. Tell me what I gotta do to please you. Baby, anything you say, I'll do. Cause I only wanna make you happy. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart is true. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was my space days right there. This is throwing. Hey, okay, next one. Don't listen to what people say they don't know about. About you and me, put it out your mind, cause it's jealousy. Yes. They, they don't know about this here. <laughs> okay, okay. You put your twist on it, look. <laughs> okay, here we go. Even though I'm not your man, you're not my girl, I'ma call you mine. Shawty, <laughs> you got it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> you got it. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. You got me. Okay, okay. Get it together, Drew. <laughs> you little, you got to do a little wind up. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> go ahead, go, go, go ahead. Okay. Nine o'clock. Home alone, paging you. Wishing you come over my, my page. place. After, After while. while. <laughs> Let me know. We were talking about the last time that last you were here. Time. You were here. <laughs> I'm cool. Okay. I'm glad it. Okay. Can I be for real? This is how I feel. I'm in need of love. And it's that butt out of here. I know the song. I know the song. <laughs> Ooh, you just not tight. What is yeah, that? You got it? Okay. That's Lloyd. Um, that's Lloyd. Oh, I forgot the name of this song. Ha 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 She's yeah. fine too. She's fine yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if you know this one. Okay, meet me in the trap. It's going down. Meet me in the trap. It's going down. That's the young jock, right? Going down. You know, the young jock going down. Hey, man, that's a good one. Everybody did doing a little back in the day. I remember that. <laughs> Yo, is it called a motorcycle? What was it? I think it's a motorcycle. <laughs> okay, the next one. Every time I try to leave, something keeps pulling me back, me back, telling me I. Need you in my life. Yeah. Me, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. That's uh Chingy and Tyrese, right? Yes, yes, yes. I love that. I love that song. I played, I had that one on repeat. <laughs> okay. 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 So I'm from Memphis. And of course I gotta throw my two Memphis songs in, maybe three. How well are how knowledgeable are you with Memphis? Songs like the artists that came out of Memphis. I chose people that are known. 
a little bit, sipping on some scissors, a little bit. <laughs> and, and now you see. More chicken, chicken. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Boy, please, please. whatever. Listen. <laughs> I halfway don't want to do them now. You know me. You so. I got to stay fly. I, 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 I. <laughs> Rip on the juice. Rip on the phone off. Rip on the juice. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. See, you're showing me up, okay? Here we go. <laughs> uh, ever since I could remember, I've been popping my collar. Popping, popping my In collar. My popping, collar. popping. popping. My color. Ever, since Ever since I can't remember, I've been popping my color. <laughs> popping <Hey>. my color. <laughs> I remember that song. That was a hit. I chose an easy one too because I didn't know how knowledgeable you would be. You gonna get this? One. I'm gonna throw the bonus one in there after this one to see. This one is a, a ringer, but the the one that I got is. <laughs> you know it's hard out here for a pimp. When are you trying to? Uh, get the money for the rent. Yeah, no, I ain't mean, gas money spent. We'll go a whole lot of bitches jumping she up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Do you know who Player Fly is? Ooh, no, you no. got me. Okay, I'm going to try this song. You might know it, you might not. If you don't, it's a Memphis classic, but it might be super deep in the trenches. But here we go. Nobody needs nobody. All I need is me and my dog. So, uh, da, 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 I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's an old song, but it's nobody needs nobody by Player Fly. If you get a chance, to listen to. But anyway, you did so Shout good. Out Look, I'm impressed. You Shout got me. You got me. You got me when you said a little bit, and then you come out swinging <laughs> with the class. <laughs> you said sipping on some scissor. Like a lot of people do not know that. What? Sipping on some sip, sipping on some sip, sipping on some sip, sipping on what? Okay, with that, that's the end of the. Wait, that's your segue. Wait, what you mean? That's your segue, and with that, that's your segue. I'm on to you. I'm <laughs> on to you, and with that, that's your segue. Okay. That's how you get to the next thing, and with that. I got tears that is my <laughs> study you too, huh? Run for my money, okay. <laughs> and with that, and with that, with what? With with what? What what's the that? What, what is it with? Did. It's just what we did. <laughs> okay. We're done with game time. Oh my god, listen. You giving me a run for my money. <laughs> and with that, okay. Like that. <laughs> okay. I want to know what have you been listening to recently? What I know you produce music, and I know I've heard people say that they don't really listen to other artists or whatever, but what have you been listening to recently? Man, <laughs> I would say to people that make music and they don't, don't listen to other music, get off your high horse, bro. You got to study and absorb the culture. You got to know where music is at for you to mm -hmm. make music and where you can exist in the world to either gain new fans and gain an audience or stand out and be different. But you got to study. Um, mm -hmm. Man, artists I listen to now, man, I'm really into, uh, there's a new country artist that I just discovered. I mean, he's larger in life, named Morgan Whalen. He got some mm -hmm. stuff I like. I like the tone. Um, I really like an artist named Breland. He like kind of like a... Uh, He's an artist that does, that yeah, really can do anything, but uh, he kind of does like country trap, kind of like uh, Old Town Road and R&B, gospel, like he, he's, he's dope. And then I think on the female side, the artist that I like, uh, I'm a big Beyonce fan, of course, I got to respect the queen. Who else am I? I'm into Coco Jones. I like, um, who else do I like? I like uh, Jazzy. She's a songwriter, notoriously, that is now getting her shot as an artist. So I kind of identify with that, you know, getting your chance as an artist. Her name's Jazzy. She signed a Diddy, actually. Mm -hmm. And then um, I would say my artist, Chevy. You know what I'm saying? Got a root for the whole team. My artist, Chevy, you feel me? But yeah. And then my goddamn self. Those are artists that I like. <laughs> Those are artists that I like because <laughs> they're <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> so. What role, you know, I told you I pray and I just share my experiences on my channel and um, 
I don't push it on everybody. I just do God the way I do God. And if it works for you too, then, you know, it works for you and you can get on this train with me. I want to ask you, what role has God and prayer played on your journey? Oh, the biggest, um, I know that I'm a product of his blessings and his understanding and his guidance and me listening and him teaching me the lessons. Some lessons I had to learn the hard way because I was an idiot, but some lessons, you know, he was able to teach me, you know, a little, a little less problematically. Um, but I would say um, I'm in everything. I think I'll, I'll talk, I mentioned before, like I took a few L's, you know, I didn't hit rock bottom a few times. And I think each time, you know, I had God to kind of listen to me, absorb my issues and my problems, then, you know, try to nudge me in the right direction because I believe that faith without work is dead. Like you could pray all day, but if you don't get up and go make it happen, you know, only so much will happen, I think. Um, so I think God has played a huge part of my life. And um, I don't know, me and God have a cool relationship because uh -huh. I feel like I can do things here on earth and he looked down and be like, there you go, little nigga, good job, you know? So, you know, I'm thankful for sure. Okay. And has there been times where you had to completely rely, and I'm pretty sure you've already touched on it, um, have you has there been times where you had to completely rely on God or prayer to get you through a project or to draw inspiration from during you working on a project? Uh, not a project, but a life thing. I was homeless when I lived in uh, Hollywood. I was homeless in the Honda in Hollywood for about four months. You know, I just kind of fell mm -hmm. on hard times. And I remember like my lowest point, I remember saying to myself with tears in my eyes, God, please just don't let me die. I didn't care about food. I didn't care about clothes. I didn't care about money. I didn't care about nothing. I was like, if I could just stay alive. I'll have a shot to change my life. That was, that's, you know, that's at the bottom. That's like the breaking point. You feel me? So I think that moment, I think God in that moment kind of just said, um, you know, just keep living, live the fight another day. And I think slowly but surely I was able to put some pieces together. I sold a beat for a hundred dollars and I was like, man, like I can do this to make money, you know? So music really saved my life. You mm -hmm. feel me? That's why I take it so serious. And, you know, I'm so, I'm in love with music and music love me back. And, you know, I'm thankful mm -hmm. for it because, you know, this, this shit saved my life. You feel me? This ain't no, I want to be cool. So I'm going to do music. Like, nah, yeah. this shit saved my life. You heard? But um, I would say moments like that for sure. Definitely. Make and, and one thing I'll say about, this is important that I say this. When you analyze struggle and adversity and sacrifice in the music industry, just in life, period. I think the thing that kind of helped me get past the hump was sometimes it might be a rite of passage. God might have purposely made you struggle and made you sacrifice and made you endure to really see how bad do you really want it and to try to build character. Because I can say at the time when I was my lowest, things like discipline, commitment, focus, execution, and me realizing, have fun with the process on the journey or the lessons I learned when I was, you know, on my ass. So I kind of feel like I used to have this, yeah, man, I had to struggle and I, and I had this negative thing. Now it's kind of like, you know, it was unfortunate. It happened. But, you know, it's a rite of passage. And I always think someone else could have had it worse or someone that might be home for eight months instead of four or all kind of things. So I kind of use it as like fuel and it's positive for me now. It's not this, oh, man, I had to struggle, came up from the mud. I had to. I don't look at it that way, because if you look at all our idols and people we look up to, everybody had to struggle and endure something. You know, the story about Oprah, Oprah done been through all kinds yeah. of stuff. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio won an Oscar a few years back. I think he went on 100 auditions before he finally got something. You know what I mean? Like everybody faces rejection and has to go through hard shit. It's just kind of a rite of passage to truly be great. So to everybody out there that might have endured something or went through something, it's okay. I'm sorry that happened to you. I hope that you can recover. I hope that you can take that experience and really truly build and get better and just be sharper between the ears. And that, you know, God will bless you as well, too. I hope that for everybody who's ever been through something. That's why I always say don't give up. I That's another purpose behind my channel is just like I share so a lot of all of my struggles with them transparent um with what has happened to me in my life and the losses then I got a video coming out next week called take this L aka lesson because it's never a loss it's always a lesson so I got like the big L on there um but mm -hmm. yeah, speaking on you speaking on exactly what I talk about in that video um so I'm here for it I'm here for it I totally understand that's even from self-experience and I'm pretty sure our stories is never our stories alone. Somebody else is going through whatever we have gone through. It's just like so good that you kept pushing and you you so transparent with sharing what you have gone through. So people can be like, okay, I'm here, but it don't always last. It don't that this don't stop. 
this is just for a month with this two shall pass. I used to hear older people saying that when I was younger. I'm like, they just got those sayings. No, literally, this too shall pass. Like, it's not here to stay. But I'm glad you said that. Amen. Mm -hmm. What projects do you have coming up and when? And do you have any favorites of your new project? So I have a single called Sundress Season. Mm -hmm. It's dropping May 5th, available on all platforms. Pre-save on Spotify if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. um, this song is a song that combines elements of blues, country, and R&B, and rock, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a song that's glorifying women of all shapes and sizes and nationalities and, you know, everything. And, uh, you know, just the elegance and the beauty of, you know, a sundress, a classic fashionable garment that I know people love around the world love to wear. And this song is just highlighting and celebrating that. Yeah. And it comes out May 5th. May 5th. You guys mark that in yeah. your calendars. Okay. Go ahead and pre-save it on all platforms. You heard that. Sundress season. Yes, because he liked that. So definitely mark it on all platforms if you have them. Yes, be. <laughs> I feel like I need to dance with you. I feel like I got to do something. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm happy, man. God is in here. Yes. I'm feeling good. He is good. He's good. You can say that again. Okay. okay. You just answered it, but social media. Think of social media. Where can people find you on social media? I have you scrolling across on the bottom on IG, your IG name, but where can people find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram at I am Davis Chris. <laughs> Boom. See, I did a dramatic pause. See how you were like really waiting for what I had to say. I've learned things. I'm really an actor. Dramatic pause. <laughs> Try it. But yeah. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Mr. Davis Chris, I think. On YouTube, Davis Chris, everything Davis Chris. Tap in with the kid. I love to, you know, connect with fans and talk to people. And, you know, if you're trying to work, you know, hit me up. You, know, you might have to come with a little check. But, you know, it's all good. We'll figure it out because you know, I'm like that. But, um, yeah, man, Davis Chris on all platforms, man. You know, get, get with it or get lost. You know, talk to me nice or don't talk to me at all. all right? Let's get it. Okay. And do you have any shout outs do you have any shout outs and do you want to give your signature send off once you give yours i'm going to give a shout out and then we're going to close this thing on out and Man, shout out shout out my bro uh will with the exclamation shout out my bro shane foster shout out my my sis chevy shout out my actual sister crystal davis mom and dad i love y'all and you've been rocking with the boy davis chris i'm getting with it i'm getting ignorant i'm getting back to business and I'm like that, you feel me? Not like that, but like that, you feel me? And uh, man, it's been a, a pleasure and a joy rocking with you, and I appreciate you, and I thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to, so for those of you who have not heard the fire that I dropped in the beginning, I'm gonna drop some more fire, but before I do that, I know you guys know, I gotta give a shout out to Men Foodie. Men Foodie definitely helps with the background production on, on these music interviews i know that you guys love them so much i appreciate the support behind it the fire behind it i appreciate everybody who shows up i appreciate you for having a yes in your pocket it was an immediate yes and you're so personable and amazing this has been so amazing i can't even stress i can't even stress i, I put express and stress together i said i can't express Hey Amen. It's a new word. <laughs> That'll be a new word. I can't express how appreciative and how fun this has been. Um, you have literally broke my tradition with the hashtag. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a million different hashtags floating in this chat. And with that, you guys, I'm about to drop some fire on y'all ears. And I will see y'all back with another one. I love you. Me love you long time. Bye. Thank you. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, I'm back off of the dark skin, nigga, when I apply that pressure. Yo, ex nigga, don't forget about a body, look like you need a pound. It's on the G spot when I was bouncing. Now you smell like I'm playing on it. I got different perspectives. Yeah, I hope you'll get the message. Because I'm straightforward and I'm pretty blind. I know what you really want. Someone you can love, oh yeah. 
Naturally, I'm just that guy. Naturally, I'm on a high. Naturally, I don't know why. Naturally, if I just jump off my roof, you might say that I'm naturally fly. I'm joking, but when I was down on my luck and I ain't give a fuck, I was suicidal. My excuses were so useless, but now I'm thugging on niggas like Michael Jordan. I'm important. Yo, chick call me when she wanted, cause you boring like her last. Talk to you.